I'm here at the War Memorial to remember um, 75 years ago today, on the 8th of May, that victory in Europe was declared. At the Second World War was a time of great sacrifice uh, and bred a whole generation of heroes. We're remembering locally uh, Captain Jack in raising millions to the NHS. But behind the story of the 54 names of the men who gave their life in the war and the eight who died during air raids, there are stories of heroism and sacrifice which should inspire us in our own generation. One indeed was a fire warden who uh, was trying to rescue uh, a woman and her child after the air raid on Wilmslow Road hit. In all of that years of sacrifice, we come to remember. So I'm accompanied today um, by the Reverend Philip Burroughs, who's an army chaplain, a local lad who's now serving in Swindon, and by the Reverend Mike Newman, who's a chaplain to the TA. So let's pause and as I uh, read the words from the memorial, um, and share you a prayer as we come to a time of remembrance and remember from 11 o'clock in our two minute silence. This shall be written for those that come after and the people which shall be born shall praise the Lord. So we say thank you. This is from the VE 75 celebrations tribute to the millions. Let us remember those who so selflessly gave their lives at home and abroad whose sacrifice enables us to enjoy the peace and freedom we have today. Let us remember those who came home wounded physically and mentally, and the friends and family who cared for them. Let us remember those who returned to restore their relationships and rebuild their working lives after years of dreadful conflict and turmoil. Let us remember the families that lost husbands, sons and sweethearts, let us remember the servicemen, merchants, seamen, miners, brave civilians and others from the Commonwealth and Allied countries who fought, suffered and died during several years of war. Let us remember those in reserved occupation and the brave people who kept us safe on the home front, the doctors and nurses who cared for the wounded, the women and men who toiled in the fields, those who worked in the factories, all who played such a vital role in the war effort at home.
Welcome to this talk as part of our VE Day commemorations. Uh, my name is Phil Burrows and I'm a member of uh, Cheadle Parish Church and I also lead a congregation at St Albans in Watchfield where I'm currently serving as an army chaplain. So let me read our Bible passage for today uh, and then I'll pray and let's get started. Now, the reading's taken from John chapter 14 and verses 1 to 7. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If it not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And so, Father, we do thank you for your word to us in Scripture. And uh, we pray that you would speak to each one of us this morning, not only about the sacrifices that were made uh, 75 years ago to secure our freedom, but also about the peace that you can bring in our hearts as we come into a relationship with you. And we ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Well. Friday the 8th of May 2020 marks the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, not quite the end of the Second World War. A commemorations were planned in villages, towns and cities across the land, including pipers, church bells and cathedral and church services. That is until the present pandemic struck and uh, we face a different kind of threat to our security today and we find ourselves all in lockdown. I think it's right that we don't let this anniversary pass as if it was any other day. We should be grateful for an end to war in Europe and for the sacrifices that were made to secure our freedom. But also in the light of this current COVID-19 crisis, we should remember that we came through it, that despite the long years of austerity, there was light at the other end. In his broadcast to the nation on VE Day, King George VI began, Today we give thanks to Almighty God for a great deliverance. And he continued, Let us remember those who will not come back, their constancy and courage, their sacrifice and endurance. And then let us salute in proud gratitude that great host of the living, I cannot praise them to the measure of each one's service. For in total war, the efforts of all rise to the same noble height, and all are devoted to the common purpose. Well, that's our task on this 75th anniversary. Giving thanks to God, we remember the fallen and pay tribute to that wartime generation, some of whom are still with us today and who continue to inspire us. Captain Tom, veteran of Burma and number one in the charts with You'll Never Walk Alone. Harry Billinge, Normandy veteran and darling of BBC Breakfast. And not to forget, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, our very own monarch. I hadn't realised that uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, as a young girl had broadcast to the nation with her sister Margaret back in 1940. And in recent times, she's broadcast not once, but twice during this present pandemic, uh, a thing unheard of in her long reign. 
Now, the first, Her Majesty encourages us to be the best of what it means to be human and British. And she called on us in the second to spread the living flame of the Easter hope in times of darkness. In other words, we're to share the good news that because Christ is risen, that we know with absolute certainty that death is not the end and we can receive God's peace. Well, we can learn a lot from that wartime generation, from those who have endured much and who have prevailed. There are other parallels between the Second World War and, God willing, on a smaller scale, the coronavirus. Not least the slow start at the beginning, and then the shock of the German speed of advance across Europe. Remember the phony war of 1939? It'll all be over by Christmas. And then Dunkirk the following May, when congregations overflowed and long queues formed outside cathedrals for a national day of prayer. Dunkirk truly was a miracle of God's deliverance. So five years later, in his VE Day speech, King George VI concluded, We shall have failed if the victory which they died to win does not lead to a lasting peace founded on justice and goodwill. Let us take up our work again, resolved to do nothing unworthy of those who died for us, and to make the world such a world as they would have desired for their children and for ours. In saying that, King George expressed the thoughts of countless servicemen and women, even to the present day, that the sacrifices made and which go on being made should not be a waste, but lead to a better future. In these current times, criticising those who are doing their very best under extraordinary circumstances is not helpful. As Christians, we're called to pray for our leaders. But the time will come not only to capture lessons learnt, but also to do some things differently. We too should long that the present sacrifices being made are not a waste, and we should resolve to work again for a society based on justice and goodwill. What are we learning during the lockdown? And what might God be saying to us in this new found space that we find ourselves in? About our climate, the economy, key workers and the vulnerable. About our life priorities, our well-being and who or what we value most, who's most precious to us. About who we put our trust in and the big questions of life and death itself. Pray God we won't miss this opportunity. Now in our Bible reading, Jesus has just celebrated the Passover with bread and wine, and in his Last Supper, given it new meaning. His body broken for us. His blood shed for the forgiveness of sins for all who put their trust in him. And then speaking of his imminent death on the cross, his death that we might live. He tells them that Judas will betray them, Peter will deny him, he's going to leave them. And then he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. No wonder they're anxious, asking life's big questions. What do you mean, trust in God, trust also in me? What can Jesus say to allay? the fears and anxieties that his disciples have in the face of death. Well, he points them to a familiar event in first century Jewish culture, that of the marriage between the groom, that is Jesus, and his bride, the church, all who believe in him. Uh, And he does so in order to assure them that God always keeps his promises. Let me explain. So in Jesus' day, and uh, picture mud compounds in Afghanistan rather than Cross Trees Park or Barnes Village on Kingsway. When a Jewish man proposed, he offered a cup of wine as a promise to pay the bride price 
to the father. Now, if the girl drank from it, she accepted his proposal and a long period of betrothal began. The groom had to go back to his father's house. He had to build rooms. He promised to come and get his bride when it was ready, but she wouldn't know when that time was, when her time would come. It could even be in the middle of the night, unexpected. So as a bride, she would just have to be prepared. She would have to be ready in advance. Now at the proposal, for all of that to take place, all she had to do was say, yes, I do. Now do you see, Jesus says, he's just made a new covenant, a new promise to pay the price for our sins in his blood, to win his bride, the church, by his death on the cross. And then he says, don't worry, trust in God, trust also in me, the bridegroom. You see, in my father's house are many rooms. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me when the time comes. This is the good news of the Christian message. It is Jesus who is the key to God's kingdom. Now, many of us are familiar of this Easter message of hope that lasts uh, from the moment we believe and right into eternity, an eternity in God's presence. But there are many in our society who've never even heard the Bible's account, let alone the need for faith in Jesus, opening a new relationship with God who made us and who longs for us to love him. Like Thomas, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Well, when tragedy strikes and fear and anxiety prevail, Jesus didn't promise any glib or easy answers. He promised to be the answer. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He promised to be the way to follow the truth to believe, and the life to live. And it's in him that we find peace with God and a deep sense of his peace that whatever befalls, nothing can separate us from his love, not even death itself. And all we have to do to his invitation, his proposal, is to say, yes, I do. You know, one of the saddest things for me in the media is to witness the palpable anxiety of so many people, including key workers who have every right to be concerned as they selfishly, selflessly step up to the plate, despite fears for their own safety and for that of their loved ones. You know, you just want to wrap them up and, and take, the, take it all away from them. But at the end of John chapter 14 and verse 27, Jesus says to each one of us, as he extends his invitation to faith, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. There's a verse in the Bible, Isaiah chapter 55, that says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. God's greatest gift is always, ultimately, simply himself. So I'm going to close with a prayer from 24-7 prayer that we can echo in the silence of our own hearts. Let us pray. Lord, I name before you those who in times of tragedy have walked away from faith because you seem silent, absent, or even non-existent. I ask you to hear their prayers 
and to show them that you love them. And Lord, I humble myself before you now. I need you today. I seek your face with all my heart. Please be real to me. So Lord, heal us from the sickness that brings death to the body. Deliver us, I pray. And heal us from the sickness that brings death to the soul. Forgive us, Lord, our sins. Amen. So stay safe. There are some civic commemorations and ideas online. And may you know God's peace. Let us remember those who so selflessly gave their lives at home and abroad, whose sacrifice enables us to enjoy the peace and freedom we have today. Let us remember those who came home wounded, physically and mentally, and the friends and family who cared for them. Let us remember those who returned to restore their relationships and rebuild their working lives after years of dreadful conflict and turmoil. Let us remember the families that lost husbands, sons and sweethearts. Let us remember the servicemen, merchant seamen, miners, brave civilians and others from Commonwealth and allied countries who fought, suffered and died during several years of war. Finally, let us remember those in reserved occupation and the brave people who kept us safe on the home front, the doctors and nurses who cared for the wounded, the women and men who toiled in the fields, those who worked in the factories, who all played such a vital role in the war effort at home. O Lord our God, as we remember, teach us the ways of peace. As we treasure memories, teach us hope. And as we give thanks for the sacrifice of the past, help us to make your future in this world until your kingdom come. Amen. <laughs>